Hey guys, we're back with another update. Today, we're gonna to be weighing and balancing Google Car. So with SCCA Solo Racing, there's a couple of classes that have minimum weights. And all the car classes have minimum weights. For a minimum weight, it's very important for a lightweight package, such as a cart, because just 20 pounds can be a huge uh, advantage for someone that is a liar. Yeah, so in order to even the playing field, there's a minimum weight that everybody's gotta make. You can weigh way over the weight, there's your fat boy, but minimum weight. So let's talk about the minimum weight. So the target weight for our class and engine package, which is the stock Honda, is 375 pounds. Now, notice how I said stock Honda is because there are different engine packages that have different weights. Yeah. So there's, there's some that are more, I think this is probably the, the minimum weight that the, the other engine packages actually weigh more. Um, but what we're also gonna be shooting for a rear weight percentage of about 57%, that could be off by a little bit, but that's gonna be what we target. So Ashley ran JB and JC, you started out in JC, right? In yeah. the junior classes, so she's very familiar with running a go-kart. Yeah, uh, it's a possibility that I might run the shifter, but for now I'm gonna stick to the car. So for the ladies classes, which is KML, they actually get a 20 pound advantage on the guys. So she, she her total weight will actually be 355. So fuel is a variable that changes the weight of a cart. So fuel weighs six pounds per gallon. We have a two and a quarter gallon tank. I have set a line on the tank as the minimum amount of fuel we're ever gonna run. When we go below that, we'll add fuel, or when we get down to that, we'll add fuel. That way we're never below that weight. So that's where we have the fuel level set right now for when we're taking our measurements to make sure we're never under this weight. So what we're using here today is a very nice set of intercom scales that I bought because I was corner weighing a car and you need these nice scales for doing a car. But these cost almost $1,000. You can get them a little under $1,000. That's still quite expensive. What you can do to make things a little bit cheaper on yourself is you can go to Walmart and buy just a regular set of bathroom scales and you can get four of them. I think they run about $20. Yeah, $20 one. for digital scale. You can get an analog scale for about you know under $10 and that'll, that'll work just fine. Uh, it'll take the weight of a, a cart. It will not take the weight of a car, obviously. So if you're gonna be weighing a car, you may look at a nice set of scales like this. So these car scales have a feature where it'll do percentage of weight on whichever pad you select. So I can do the left rear and the right rear, which you see selected here in these little arrows. These are your individual pads. So this is showing us the percentage in the rear, because I've got both rears selected. I'll show you that now. Okay, so with these scales, what they can do is they can show rear weight bias. And so we have kettlebells here, minus 70 pounds. Minus 35 pounds. And when we put these on here, mathematically, there should be a 33% rear bias. As you see here. Now, when we swap them, there should be a 66% rear bias. Which now you can see here. The proper way to set scales up for a car, especially if you're corner weighing, is to level them from each pad to one another to make sure they're level. I only have a two foot level. We're on coronavirus lockdown right now, so I don't wanna to go to the hardware store and buy an eight foot level. Um, if you're corner weighing a car, this is fairly important because you're going to be moving the spring heights up and down to, to vary the amount of weight at each corner. We're not doing that today. All we're getting is total weight of the cart to make sure we make minimum weight. And we're also checking how much is in the rear. So for this cart setup where these scales are fairly close together, I'm fairly comfortable with uh, the floor here in the garage is level enough for us to do what we're going to do today. So when you're recording the weight and balance of a cart, it's important to have equal tire pressure around. Therefore, the balancing is correct. So the weight of the cart with its minimum fuel, nobody in it, is 202 pounds.
So when Ashley sat down, we immediately saw another problem besides her being a little bit underweight. She's also a little shorter than us, so she needs five, three or four, maybe five inches worth of travel here. So I don't know, maybe she won't be able to run in the cart. So here's the tally from everybody's weigh-in. I'm five pounds to the good. Alex needs two pounds and Ashley needs 21 pounds. I don't think we can get 21 pounds in a fast four plus she can't really reach the pedal. So it's looking like we're gonna have to buckle down and find some money to buy her some tires for <laughs> yeah. the golf R. Just get your mom to, to fess up some cash for us, right? Yeah. So while I don't think we're gonna have to add any weight to the cart as me being a little over and Alex being a little under, I think we can just add a little more fuel than what we have at our minimum, maybe make a new minimum, maybe have Alex eat a couple more cheeseburgers. But I'm gonna show you how to mount a weight anyway today, just to show you what that process is like. Uh, the SCCA allows 10 pounds per bolt. This is a 10 pound weight, this is five pound weight. These weights are actually what scuba divers use for ballast. And a lot of the cart companies sell these same weights. They've got slots in them here for putting them on a belt. These holes, if you do them yourself, it's a little bit difficult for the to get the drill bit through there. Uh, some of the companies sell them pre-drilled. I would just get them pre-drilled. That way you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you have to have a 5 16 grade 5 bolt with a washer. Uh, these, these washers are actually made for mounting a seat. As you can tell, they've got a little uh, easing of the side here so, so it doesn't hurt you when you get in the seat. Uh, they require safety wire on the nut or two lock nuts. I, I just prefer to use two lock nuts. That way you don't have to worry about safety wire. So when you're mounting these weights, you want to try to find a spot to where when you tighten them up, they don't get bound up. So you can either mount them, see they're curved, to where the, this part in like this. If you want to mount it like this, you can mount it in a curved area like that. A lot of people like to mount them in the on the back of the seat, because there's a lot, of, a lot of space back here. I'm gonna be putting this one up here between our legs because we've got the, the weight distribution, the front to rear the way we want it. So we wanna to try to keep this weight, you know, in the middle of the cart. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that now. Uh, you can mark this spot, take a pencil right through the hole, and then mark it, and then we'll drill the hole. So I've got our spot marked here where we're gonna drill our hole. I've got Alex Manning, uh, the shop vac. This seat is fiberglass. Anytime you do any drilling on this, you want to have a vacuum cleaner to suck up all the old fiberglass. You do not want to get this fiberglass into your hands. It will itch you for a week. So we'll have Alex turn on the vacuum cleaner. fiberglass on you, I would not only use the top back, but I would take some duct tape, wrap it around your hand the opposite the normal way, and then use it around the hole. Try to make sure you got all that fiberglass out of your way, because like I said, you do not want to get it on your hands. We've got our hole drilled, got my seat washer, Put it down through the hole, Alex is on the other side. So here's what it looks like when it's mounted. You want to check to make sure that it doesn't go below the frame rails. We're fine there. So I think we got our weights where we need to be. At least we know where we're at. Uh, make a little bit of fuel adjustments. We should be fine. Uh, may check again just to be sure right before the start of the season. We're not sure when that's going to be right now because everything's been put on hold because of the coronavirus. We do have new set of tires. We'll put those on in the next video and uh, we'll see you then.